the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. That's powerful. John uh, 17 is it, it's, it's, it's called the High Priestly Prayer. This is a prayer that Jesus was giving to God for us that have received Jesus Christ, our personal Lord and Savior. And like I said, or didn't say, I've said many times before, man who put on the title of Christianity has done some bad things and we got some history that is bad. We know that. But it's not the church. See, the Bible says the tree is known by its fruits or fruit, right? I said I call someone when I said fruits, I know we're talking about the holy, we're talking about the fruits of the spirit, which is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meek, temperance, against such there is no law. And the fact that we have a commandment. What I'm saying is, but the Bible said that tree is known by its fruit. What what I'm saying is that those those anything of history or even today that is short hate and intolerance is not the church. Because the Bible says you know the church because of the love we have for one another. We know the church because of the love that it has for our neighbor. We know the church. A tree is known by its fruit. If, 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 if love is not being demonstrated, but intolerance, then that's not the church. See, it's that characteristic that identifies who we are, not what we say we are. There's some people that say they're Christian, but they're not doing the things that a Christian is supposed to do. Let me come off for a second. I want to come off for a second, but I got to make sure you guys understand. A tree is known by its fruit. A tree is known by its fruit. So just because someone say that they are a Christian, but their fruit that they bear is of the flesh and carnality then they're not what they say. It's almost like it's, it's an ID card. Hey, hi, that's, that's a good one too. Look at all these type of revelation. The fruit of the spirit is an ID card of the church. You know, people, please say, say give me a license, drive, license, give me a driver's license, a registration. That identifies who you are. That license identifies who you are. The license the registration identified that this car belongs to you. Amen. First, I got identified that this is you, and then the registration said that you're the one supposed to be driving this car, right? <laughs> you, we, the church, is identified by the characteristics of the Holy Spirit. That's our identification. Whoa, man, I'm I'm gonna do look, I'm gonna do a TikTok on that one. Our identification is the fruits of the Spirit. Our identification is the commandment by Christ to love one another as he has loved us. That's in John 13, 34. Love one another as I love you. Did you also love one another? Bear fruits of the Spirit. That is our identification card. So you can go to whatever church you want to go to. And y'all can sit there and talk about hating people because of the color of their skin. You can go sit there and sit there and lie and say that these, all these people, all of them, all of them act like this way. So therefore, I'm going to treat them that way. And therefore, I have the right to hate them. You know that you're not showing the fruits of the spirit. You're not showing the identification card of a Christian. And if you don't show the identification of God of a Christian, that means that you're not. Come on now. Hey, everybody listen to that one. 
If you don't show your identification, you don't show your credential of being a Christian, then you're not one. You can sit there and say you are, but if you're not showing that identification card, meaning that your characteristics are not lining up with love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, again, says there's no law, then you're not a Christian. You can call yourself anything you want, you, but the bottom line is you're not showing your potential. Your credentials is being a Christian is to bear the fruits of the Spirit. And your credentials is the confessing that Jesus Christ is personal Lord and Savior, not your pastor, not your church, not your race of people of color skin, not your country, but your deep. Saying that Jesus Christ is my personal Lord and Savior. I am led by the Holy Spirit. The Bible said those are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. So therefore, if you're not lining up with these areas, but you're lined up with your flesh, you're lined up with your pastor who is not lined up with Christ. If he's not lined up with Christ, then you're not lined up with Christ. Whoa, glory to God. You got to understand that. You better check the fruit of the person that you follow. When they not bear the fruits of the spirit, I don't, it doesn't matter because you have to go to the father on your own and you're going to have to tell them I was following not Jesus, I'm following a man. And you're going to sit there and say, Lord, I thought the man was following you, even though he showed his credentials. Woo, glory to God. If his credentials, if his credentials are right, and he's pointing to a Jesus who's pointing to the father, He's been led by the Holy Spirit. He's got the right credentials. Credential. But the whole point is that you're supposed to follow. This owner's on you. He's supposed to equip you to do the work of the ministry. But the owner's on you. And you can't, you know, you're not going before the Father, blaming it on your pastor. You're not going to the Father, blaming it on your political party. You're not going to the Father, blaming it on your mom or your daddy or your children. You're not going to the Father, blaming it on anybody. You have to take ownership on your own that Jesus Christ is my personal Lord and Savior, and I bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit that dwells in me. That is on you. Everybody listening to this, and God will make sure that at least a pastor will listen to it, who will tell his people, you have to bear the fruit of the Spirit. You have to bear the fruit of the Spirit. You have to love your neighbor. You have to love one another. And one another is not just confined to the building that you go to worship. In. Your love is not confined to the to the channels of the people that you listen to. Your love is for the entire world. Because of Christ Jesus, amen. Oh man. Uh, I, you know, I don't preach myself happy on that because this baby is well on that. It's just recognizing it. It's about him. It's always been about him. And it's, it's, it's never been about you. It's never been about your past. It's never been about the complexion of your skin. It's all about him. We sit there. And then, and then we do things and try to keep people there because we want them to fit our narrative. And the narrative is that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That is the narrative. That's what's written. And then you can't sit there and go, you're not going to go before your father in heaven saying what my mama told me, what my daddy told me. If they ain't said what Jesus said, if they didn't say what the word said, it doesn't matter. You won't have an excuse. I won't have an excuse if I don't go by the word of God. You have to believe. You have to listen to the word. You need to study the word for yourself. Pastor, four the five more minutes again, please equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. Please equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. Please equip the saints to do the work of the ministry, not your ministry, but the ministry of Christ. Not your foundation, but the foundation of Christ. Let their life teach them to teach, teach one another. To let their light so shine so they can glorify God. Please. I beseech you. 
God of mercy, God. Teach, equip the saints to let their light shine so they can glorify God. If you don't do that, you're going to miss the boat. And you're going to sit there and you're going to be held, all of us are going to be held accountable because if we're not teaching them to glorify God, not your flesh, please. Stop trying to allow people and try to put everybody in a box and try to make them fit the narrative that you want them to fit. And then you can sit there and say, these people, I mean, you got, I mean, I was listening, I should have, next time I, I think I'll put on there where the racial rhetoric that people use, whether you <laughs> racial rhetoric against whites or racial rhetoric against blacks or racial rhetoric against Hispanics or Asian or something like that, all these little racial rhetoric that you do and then you call yourself the body of Christ, you need to understand that you will be held accountable for that. Let your light shine to glorify God. You don't sit there and try to put people, then what I, what I really don't like is that when we try to create circumstances to make people fall and corral people into the narrative that we want. We got, we got we got more people in jail and in, 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 in any place in the world because we're so busy trying to corral people into the narrative that we want. We want to put them in an environment that 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 will make them devils. Make them. I mean, you these, these cruel environments that we have created. I own a hell on earth in the prison we have created. So that those people, you got somebody going there for one year, two years, and they got dealing with somebody, they got life in prison, and they got those people sitting there beating them, raping them, and everything else, or they got to sit there and become just a murderer like everybody else in there so that they, they can survive. And then they still come out eventually, and then they come out worse than they were because that's what we wanted them to be. We want to make them. We want that narrative for them. And that's not what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to make the narrative of Christ. And that's what we're going to read these scriptures in John 17. And we're going to wrap up with that. Amen. Please love one another. It's a highly priestly prayer. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, This is Jesus praying, saints. Father. The hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh. All flesh, see? White, brown, black. All flesh. That he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal that they might know thee come on now that they may know thee the only true god and jesus christ who thou hast sent i have glorified thee on the earth jesus always trying to glorify the father i have finished the work which thou has gave me to do Hey, glory to God. This is good people. Now we got it, right? And now, O oh Father, glorify thou me with thy own self, with the glory which I have had with thee before the world was. Come on, say. Listen with Jesus. This is prayer from Jesus. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. All of the coming to the body of Christ have been manifested. We have come out of the world. We're in this world. We're not of this world. Thine were they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Pastors, make sure, teach your people to keep the word. It's the word that matters, right? Seven, now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. Everything Jesus has is from God. For I have given them the 
word. That what makes us one. You can go to one congregation, another congregation, it's the word of God. He said, for I have given unto them the words that thou gavest me, and they have received them and have known surely that I've come out from thee, and they have believed that thou hast sent me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Jesus said, I, I, I pray for them, not for the world. Verse 10, in all mine are thine. Look at Jesus said, just like we should get the point I said, everything we have is God. Wow. And thou are mine, and I am glorified in them. Whoa. Did you catch that? Whoa. <laughs> Did you catch that? He said, I am glorified in them. We're supposed to glorify Jesus. <laughs> glorify Jesus. Jesus glorified the Father. The Holy Spirit, the Comforter, comes and teaches us so that we can glorify God through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am glorified in death. Jesus said, I am glorified in death. Are you glorified in Jesus? Are we glorified in Jesus? Are we glorifying our political parties? Are we glorifying our ministries? You know, denominations? Are we glorifying the flesh? Are we allowing people who glorify the flesh to control us? Are we allowing people to be the one that tells us are we more concerned about being heard by people and making ourselves please people than pleasing God, pastors, ministers, body of Christ? Are you more interested in getting approval and glorifying people other than glorifying God? Are you glorifying God? Are you glorifying God or are you glorifying the color of your skin, whether you're white or black or brown? Are you glorifying people based on the political party? Are you trying to glorify your party? Are you trying to glorify your party? Are you trying to glorify your parents, your children? Are you glorifying other, anything other than God and his word? And even in the Ten Commandments, you shall have no other God before me. Are we glorifying the Father in heaven through Jesus Christ? Are we doing that? Or are we glorifying people? Are you glorifying yourself? Are you glorifying yourself? Ask these are questions that you need to answer for yourself. Are you glorifying yourself? Are you glorifying people? Are you glorifying political parties? Are you glorifying the color of your skin? Are you glorifying your children, your parents, and all the other people that can't get you in heaven? That can't save your soul? Are you glorifying those things that has no profit? Are you glorifying money that you can't take with you when you leave this world? And you can sit there and say, well, I had a good time. I enjoyed myself. I, I had a big old yard and I had a big old mansion. I, I was in a big old building. I had a suite and all that other stuff. You can't take none of that with you. Going to somebody else when you leave. Would it really give you eternal life? You got to think about that. Are you glorifying God? Are you glorifying Christ? Or are you glorify yourself? That's what you need to understand. That's what you got to ask yourself. But that's, I think that's a very, hey, there's a good point from this chapter, man. I'm, 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 I'm about ready to preach myself. I've been going about my business. Hey, glory to God, but I got to glorify the Father. So I